Let's check out a dope new AI tool. It's called Hicks AI. It has a ton of features and I've been invited to take a look. So let's see. You can get started for free without any paid account and immediately it'll ask you for your role. Like what exactly are you using it for? I don't think the features will change that much based on your selection, but I'll select copywriter. There we go, small business. And uh, this is kind of like an online ad, I guess. Again, this survey may not matter as much. And there you go, you get a bunch of tool suggestions. Apparently this has 120 plus tools across 50 plus languages. I don't think ChatGPT supports that many languages, does it? Man, there are so many, it's almost overwhelming. Let's pick something. How about I go to the dashboard and select this long form article section. There's an article rewriter. I mean, that's one area where I've seen most AI tools struggle to rewrite existing articles. So let's see how well this one does. I'll take a just an example article from Verge. I mean, whoever designed this new homepage. Ugh, man, I hope you're happy with yourself because I'm not. Let's go to the original source and I'll just copy a bunch of text from here. It's already well written, but but let's see how else we can rewrite it. I'll copy and paste into Hicks AI and I'll just click rewrite. Let's see if it does a better job than literally every other AI writer. Okay, it wrote something without any proper paragraph formatting. That's fine. I guess I can't really edit anything here. You know what? Let's copy this generated text and go to Hicks editor. Maybe we can do something there. Oh, I can press double slash and then I can ask it to make some prompts. We'll check that out in a bit, but let's see what we have so far. I'll kind of space these out so it's easier to read. You know what, reading through this, it's actually pretty good. I've never been happy with rewritten content from any AI tool. I think this might be an exception. Of course, I have to play around with it a bit more. I'm not gonna directly use this text. It's just an example but we are off to a promising start. Now let's try prompting, shall we? As soon as I type those two slashes, I get this pop-up where I can write a prompt. And there you go, it directly populates it into the editor. I asked it to generate a video script in Spanish and sure enough, it is writing something in Spanish. And just like ChatGPT, you can continue the prompt response or you can stop it there. So there you go, I asked for something in Spanish and it did write a script in Spanish. Let's ask something in English, maybe about this iPhone 15 announcement. And I think it understood my meaning of script as a literal movie script. It's suggesting acting and stuff. I mean, that's mostly my prompt's fault. It's not the AI's issue. I mean, if you don't believe me, we can try the same prompt on chat GPT and it'll give a similar response. Obviously that means it's my prompt that needs to be improved. You can do the same things like you do with any other generative AI tool. You know, get ideas by brainstorming or create a template for it directly in the same place. Let's ask for a LinkedIn post, shall we? Yeah, it's very recognizable. Like if I ask chat GPT, it'll basically give me a similarly structured post. But the advantage with Hicks AI and this particular editor is that it gives me extra options. Like I can select a bunch of text text and proofread grammar, I can shorten it and rewrite it. Basically the tools that you find in something like Grammarly are all integrated in one single page. So you don't have to switch between tabs or multiple apps or have multiple accounts. You have this one account and you're set. ChatGPT doesn't really have anything like this. So yeah, this is good for content creators. All right, what else do we have? I mean, you can see there are so many varieties and they're all pretty much self-explanatory, right? You can understand what they're about to do. You can write a how-to guide as well with step-by-step -step instructions. <laughs> Let's see. And as I was editing this, they released an update where now GPT-4 is available. So you can select that from the drop down and you will now access GPT-4. Apparently Hicks AI can generate factual data, you know, so let's take a look how factual it actually is. Let's ask for something which we kind of already know the answer to, like how to clear browser cache. So it'll ask for a primary keyword. So once I give a bunch of keywords, let's see what it generates. Okay, it generates titles in the next stage. That's pretty consistent with many tools I've seen. They generate templates stage by stage. That gives you more control over how your final article's design comes out. Select a nice looking title, then you get the outline. You can expand on those outlines and see what content each outline will have, and you can delete or edit those. I mean, if I was writing a blog, I wouldn't directly include all these topics as such. This is a good thing, you know, this is what I mean. It saves you a lot of brain power by giving you good suggestions which you can always delete if you don't like so there's nothing to lose really and there you go it started writing a pretty good looking article so far but that's not the important thing the important thing is factual correctness which we will test now i'm gonna follow the exact instructions that it mentions and see if it's accurate let's go to firefox shall we so it says click on the three line icon good that's right i mean it, it doesn't just say click on menu or something it describes it properly okay it's kind of a miss over there i know i have to go to settings but it says you have to go to options uh, so the wording is a little different 
But after that, everything else is accurate. I have to go to privacy and security and then cookies inside data. Yep, all that is correct. And then finally click on the clear button and confirm it once again. That's right. So it has the idea correct, just the terms are a little mismatched, maybe because it's referring to an older version of Firefox. But the steps are correct and that's more important. Let's try another one, maybe Microsoft Edge. Oh, go away McAfee, what is this? I actually don't know how to clear it directly. I use a shortcut. So let's see step by step. I'll open Edge. All right, so it does specify as a three dot menu. That's good. I like details. And then it says settings, good, accurate. In the left sidebar, oh, okay. So this is stupid in Edge. There's a sidebar again on the left, despite having all these menus there on the screen. Man, Edge is weird. Okay, fine. Let's go to the sidebar. Let's click on the privacy and search thing. And that's it. Choose what to clear. Yep. I didn't know that this is how you usually do it because I don't use Edge. So yeah, there you go. Factually accurate. And then click on clear as usual. So you see, it is factually accurate. Well done. And I like the fact that it's already properly formatted with headings and everything. So there's little less work for me when I'm finally drafting it, you know. The point of AI tools is to take over as much repetitive work away from you so you can focus on being creative. And so far it's doing that. It even has a chat where you can kind of chat with it similar to a GPT service. So this tool is constantly evolving. In fact, just when I tried it, there was a major update. So I'm pretty excited to see where this will be in like the next six months. There's gonna be a video to article feature as well. I mean, the Hicks chat kind of gave me a hint that it will be there, but it doesn't have those features yet. It'll also be able to browse the web soon. So that's nice. But for now, it'll just give you, you know, information for anything you're looking for. Okay, there's a useful email writer too. You know, sometimes I struggle with drafting a good email. Let's see how well this does. I'll draft an email to myself and I'll just kind of set a task to myself maybe. As soon as I type double slash, it suggests me a bunch of templates. Maybe I'll select business email. All right, I'll just type a little bit of a message. Just one intimation of a particular word. In this case, the Pomodoro technique. So that's it. That's all I wrote, which is kind of like a message that you send someone. Let's see how it transforms it. Okay, wow. And what's impressive is that it actually added, again, factually correct data. See? it added all these extra information which I didn't include. The method involves breaking your work into 25 minute intervals. Yep, that's correct. That's exactly right. It, I didn't describe any of that as you saw. It added those info by itself. See, again, saving me that manual work of research so that I can focus on creative work. Again, if you don't believe the tool, you can double check yourself. But yeah, it will be factually correct in this case because I know it is factually correct. This is impressive. I haven't seen a single tool with email feature do a good job like this. Well done Hicks AI. I'm really liking your email writer so far. And like I said, there are like 120 plus tools there and 360 plus templates to choose from. So whatever content need you have, you'll probably find a tool for it there. And the best part is they even have a browser extension. Let's test that as well and see how well it works. I'm going to add it to my browser and it'll do a couple of things. Firstly, it'll give you a sidebar, which kind of mimics the Bing search sidebar. If you recall, you know, Microsoft Edge has a Bing sidebar there but it's only on Microsoft Edge. This will enable that for any Chromium-based browser, in my case, Brave. So that'll always be there regardless of what you're browsing. And just like Bing, when you search something, you will see extra information on your search result right there in a tiny box. So that's what they mean by Hicks AI being your co-pilot. See, it automatically lists information without you having to search for it. Oh man, $5,000 a day? Intellectual property is not something you mess with. The song is dope though, so it may be worth it. And as you're searching, if you get more more queries instead of doing a repeated search you can just ask in that co-pilot window and you'll get answers you see what's happening here in a single window i'm getting three different answers which are all relevant to my search query i don't have to switch tabs i don't have to do anything else just ask it in a single tab this is what i mean like again it reduces your repeated work you don't have to open multiple tabs and cross check something you'll have the same thing here and once it enables web search you will have even more features right there man this is exciting i can't wait for it to enable web search because that's the only thing missing from Bing AI which this doesn't do just yet. And you know how you type those prompts? With this extension, now you can type that double slash anywhere you go, including your social media. So you can type double slash and give it a prompt to generate some, you know, post for your social media account. There you go. Elon Musk is now playing 4D chess with brand names. Yeah, I mean, he do be like that sometimes. Look how he named his kid. And interestingly, when you reply to someone, you don't even have to do anything. Just type double slash and it will automatically create a response, albeit not that great so far. You may have to edit that a bit, but like I said, it only gets better from 
from here you don't have to use it obviously you can use your own creativity here but just if you don't have any idea what to type this may give you some suggestions it'll help you out of a writer's block you know that's the point and let's try the email thing my favorite email writer when you go to an email window like gmail you can see the same double slash working there and it'll automatically recognize that this is an email so you can use those same templates to draft a email body let's type a rather vague sentence and see what it comes up with it's pronounced gif by the way not gif and wow it even added extra information again which i did not include see i'm not just making it up look the ai agrees with me it's adding factual data it's pronounced gif like gift not like giraffe so it's not a gif it's gif that's how it was originally intended so don't use it as gif anymore that's great i don't have to explain this to anyone now write one sentence and let hicks ai take care of it man this is awesome i love this i get a co-pilot on the side which i can access by control p now i didn't realize there's a shortcut and you can get same features on google docs as well you can type double slash and you can you know brainstorm ideas you can write an outline write a story, whatever you need. And again, after you spend a couple of minutes refining it, there you go. You don't have to be a creator from scratch anymore. You can just edit the content it makes and call it a day. This is why I'm optimistic about AI. I believe it will augment human experience. It's not meant to replace us. Even though it can, it won't be very good at replacing us as such, at least not yet. So for now, it's a really useful tool. With some refinements, this Hicks AI has a really good potential to be you know, a competitor for any other tool out there. I'm genuinely blown away especially by that email thing and this copilot on the side i haven't used another tool quite like this have you anyway i'll leave a link in the description to hicks ai's website go take a look at their amazing set of tools i mean you can keep scrolling look at this it has a whole bunch of features like there's even a translation feature now i once in a while get like foreign comments in a different language than english so i use google translate on my browser but i guess i can use this too it'll give me a pop-up right there and i can use their grammar check or even the translate feature immediately now again google has a similar extension so i use that but still this is good to have too right really cool stuff so thanks again to hicks ai for letting me take a look at their tool they're constantly updating it so who knows by the time you're watching this maybe some new features are added or even refined altogether harness the power of double slash <laughs> check out their extension and you can start using it with a double slash anywhere you are and the pricing seems reasonable as well i mean you'll get most features for free with the zero dollar plan you'll get three thousand words a month with gpt 3.5 but if you want to access GPT-4 and you want to get more use out of this, maybe you can consider the basic plan. For business cases, $30 a month is really not that much, especially for all these features. I currently use a different feature to transcribe my videos, so if this has that, then this will be an all-in-one spot for me. Again, the links in the description and the pinned comment. Go take a look.